Hello again, students. We're going to look at three-dimensional uh, three geometric proofs of vectors. Uh, this is the first video. Um, we're going to look at some properties um, in this, like, bisection um, and looking at um, equivalent vectors and parallel vectors, amongst other things, and midpoint too. So... This video does assume you've looked at some geometric vector proofs in 2D. So 3D uses a lot of the same strategies, but we have to think in three dimensions. Wow. All right. So we see um, an example. We're going to learn through example, and I'm just going to discuss some of the features as we go through. We have this thing that you might not have, never have heard of before called a parallelopiped. Parallelopiped. Now the drawing of it there is not the most awesome drawing of a parallel pipe that I've ever seen. So let me make sure you understand what that is. It is basically a solid and it has um, basically every face of it is a parallelogram. So it's not just the cross section but every, every face, every surface is a parallelogram. So um, it doesn't really show that so much for, it shows it for the front and back pretty well. It might be a little bit hard to see that for the top and bottom and the left and the right. So you'll have to forgive me that it's not the world's best parallel pipe. We've got a given parallel pipe, but in this proof helps us because um, not all proofs give you um, points, like names for points. Sometimes you have to supply that for yourself. Now, with this given parallel of pipe, we have to prove two things. We have to, A, prove that the diagonals OF and CE bisect each other. So they cut each other in half. And secondly, after we do that, um, with the given points M and N, which are the midpoint of CB and DE respectively, we have to prove that the midpoint of M and N is the point where OF and CE intersect. Now, if you're thinking, whoa, whoa, that's too much all at once, that's okay, we'll break it down. We're going to look at proof A first, and then related to that is proof B. So I'm going to define some vectors here. So using um, OA, I'm going to let vector A, I probably should put the word let, sorry, can you see that? Let, let. Let A equal uh, position vector OA. Let C equal position vector OC. And let D equal position vector OD. So we can see those there. We've got OA. So o, o is the origin. It's always handy if you if you aren't given labels, always consider making one convenient point an origin. That's a good strategy. Okay, so that's luckily for this one that's already been given to you. So we've got OA. Now you can see that there OA is, is would be a vector traveling along that way. You can see with the thin brown line. Uh Let's choose another color then. Um, let's choose black. So OC, you can see OC is up that away, back to there. And OD, I need to grab a third color. Um, and OD, there. Now, we're going to base, base it on those three vectors. Now, they all emanate from O, the chosen origin. And uh, they're all position vectors, so they are suitable to help us build some other expressions which will help us prove this thing. Because the proof talks about OF up here first of all, <coughs> we, we uh, also need to consider uh, the midpoint. Okay, so we need to consider the midpoint because we're talking bisection. So I'm going to let the point X be the midpoint of OF. I'll note that there. So 
on the diagram now let's be careful here I need to choose another color I'm going to be choosing lots of colors just letting you know in advance I'm going to choose red so OF would be from back down there going diagonally through that's supposed to be straight I'm sorry and through there okay, you know I'm not a perfectionist visually with things so OF is there and the midpoint would be X so we could note that there so therefore OX is half of OF okay so we've defined it as the midpoint well, of course it is isn't it but using the vectors we have at our disposal we can break down OF so to get OF you can see that we can use three other vectors added together we can go <clears throat> and now it's half outside of um, getting my colors selected wrong half outside of now I'm going to put this in green to get to to get from OX now we're moving in three dimensions we've got to go up halfway up OC so it's half of OC and we've got to go half across along equivalent to OA so we put plus OA now yeah, that's the third one too if we if we've got AE that brings us out into the middle because we're on the back surface of that parallel pipe okay so it brings us out so it'd be half of AE as well now if you need to see that again or see it without all of my annotations on there just scroll the video back a little bit to have a closer look now the beautiful thing about doing that is that we can replace it with our three vectors here OC is A sorry OC OA is A sorry um, OC is C I should say so that's actually a C and I wrote the wrong symbol down so bear with me for two shakes and there we go and AE you're thinking ah you haven't defined that well what about OD OD is parallel to because it's par parallel to pi, but so OD is parallel to AE so we can put down OD therefore we can put down little d if you have a look up there okay now C plus A plus D looking at the contents of inside the brackets here okay so C C goes up here and A A goes across to B point B and D all right which goes back here basically takes us out to F and if we halve that all right we've basically got the vector OX all right so that's just checking our answer so it works okay so um, that's a result there and so now we um, we let we need to look at another point so just want to place this so we can still see the diagram all right so we need to let another point let's call it Y be the midpoint of CE so we can see that um, trying to use colors I haven't used yet okay so if we're looking at oh uh, why be the point a midpoint of CE so C C E all right so we've got two vectors one in red and one in orange and let y be the midpoint now perhaps intuitively you think it's going to be the same point as that x that you can barely see now there it is um, 
I'm just going to put it next to it, as in it could be the same point, but we haven't proven that. So just and also so you can see the the two symbols there. All right, so we haven't proven that they're the same point, but you know what? That's what we're trying to do. Well, now we're talking about OY because you see that's the position vector that will give us the point Y. We we want to know where Y is, and so we're going to use OY because it's a position vector. Okay, so OY is a position vector we want to know about that and see if we can write it in terms of some of these others. And OY is, let's have a look there, OY is coming up there. Okay, so OY is half of OC plus half of OE, or in other words, half of OC plus OE. You will probably need to pause the video at times or even scroll it back just to check what I'm saying, okay? It's important that you try and understand this because it, it just defeats the purpose if you're just trying to get the video watched. Uh, make sure you scroll it back. Now, OE can be broken down. So there's, <clears throat> there's OE there. And OE can be broken down into OA plus going across there, plus AE. So I will do that now. And again, the reason for that is to look at it in terms of the vectors we defined at the beginning. So if you go back into through your notes or through the video, you'll see that that will be half of C plus A plus D. Now, have a look just up here okay so half of the, that is half of that so we have something that equals OX up the top there okay so thus we've got uh, X point X is the same as point Y um, and so the diagonals OF and CE bisect each other. And that's what we tried to, that's what we see, um, sorry, just tidy that up a tad. OF and CE um, diagonals are then bisect each other. Okay, now let's, let's check the reasoning of that. So since both OX and OY are the same position vectors. X and Y are the same point. All right, OX and OY we showed are the same back at the beginning there. So X and Y are the same point. And because that point, that common point that they are, is halfway along each of the diagonals, they therefore bisect each other. Okay, so that's the reasoning behind this therefore. Okay, so it's, you need to be clear on why. Let's start the second part now. Just a reminder, it said that uh, given that M is the midpoint of CB and um, N is the, the midpoint of DE, as shown, <clears throat> prove that the midpoint of MN is the point where the diagonals of OF and CE intersect. OF and CE are the orange uh, and red lines. Okay, so that's those previous diagonals that we're working on. So we have to, we have to prove that MN, the midpoint of that, all right, which I'm trying to show in blue there. So the midpoint of MN is the point where those other two orange and red diagonals intersect. Now to define MN, in terms of the vectors we established at the start of the proof, okay, uh, and I'm talking about the start of part A there, we need to define uh, position vectors OM and ON. And we can define position vector OM by looking at OC plus half of CB. Have a look. And Based on the original vectors we defined in lowercase, that would be C plus half of A. 
you might need to scroll back or pause in order to see that. ON is OD plus half of DE. Okay, in terms of our unit vectors, sorry, in terms of our lowercase vectors, we have D plus half of A. So we need now to, to give this midpoint a name. So we're gonna, I'm just gonna call it Z, okay, because we've used up X and Y. So Z, uh, let Z be midpoint of MN. Thus, that, therefore, um, the point OZ, or the vector, position vector OZ, I should say, because that locates the point Z, is what I meant to say, is given by half of O to M vector, all right, which we've defined there, and half of ON, so they can be grouped together with a half outside. Okay, so you can see that on the diagram, and we're utilising that. So we can then substitute those in. We have a half, so OM is C plus half A. ON is D plus half A. And so we have a half outside of uh, A plus C plus D, and I'm putting it in that order because, have a look. Half of uh, C plus A plus D, half of, well, actually I didn't put it in the right order, C plus A plus D, it doesn't matter, it's the same. All right, so that position vector is the same. So that locates the point Z, so Z, equals x and interestingly enough equals y so um, that means that means basically that z is the same point so that means the midpoint of m n is x or it's z same point